Hello guys, welcome back to another election prediction. This time we have the 2024 house map. So we're going to go through each race and uh, rate them. So we're going to start off with Wisconsin, then North Carolina, then Ohio, then New York, because those are our potential redistricting states. All right, let's start with Wisconsin first. So this map is for sure getting redrawn. They're going to turn Wisconsin's first into a likely district, then turn Wisconsin's third into a lean blue district, and they're going to turn the 8th district into a lean Republican district. And this is probably how it'll play out. So Democrats flip two seats there. In North Carolina, the Republicans are going to gerrymander here, and they're just going to eliminate a lot of safe blue seats. They're going to get rid of the 14th, the 6th, and they're going to make the 13th no longer swing seat, just likely are, and they're going to turn the 1st into a tilt R district. It's possible Democrats get lucky and this goes to tilt blue, but for now, putting his tilt R, I think the Republicans are going to go for it. With Ohio, we're probably going to see a minimal change map, so it's going to be pretty similar to what we see right here. Uh, maybe the ninth gets a little bit more favorable for Marcy Captor, and honestly, I'm going to keep that as lean blue. The 13th, let's take a look how competitive it is. That minimal change map, it'll probably be bumped up to be a bit more blue, but I'm still playing as lean blue. Landsman, it's probably going to be bumped up to be more likely. So, again, the minimal change will probably keep this map sort of like this. Okay. Let's head to New York. All right. With New York, there's a few ways it can go. Democrats could completely nuke the Staten Island seat and just turn it lean blue. They could also turn this district into lean blue. They could just turn this one safe, and they could turn this one probably likely to safe. They'll probably pack more voters into the second district because, honestly, that's just safe Republican anyway. Uh, with the 18th, they would just probably make it a lot more safer. 17th, a lot more safer. Uh, I think they keep the three safe red districts here. They just make these a lot more safer. Just probably put them likely blue. But for now, that's uncertain. We don't know if they're going to have the votes to redistrict it for sure, just because of the Supreme Court battle in New York is still raging on. So we don't know. So I'm just going to fill in this map, just assuming this is the map. So with the first district I'm putting is Lean R. I do think Biden's presidential... He won this district by 0.2%, but I think the incumbent will have a bit of incumbency advantage. Staten Island district, again, Biden didn't do too well here. He lost by 7.6, so honestly, just safe Republican. New York's fourth, it's for sure flipping. D'Esposito has no shot at winning re-election. I'm putting his lean blue. It's a plus 14 Biden district. George Santos, he's running for re-election, but he's getting primaried out of there, so... I still think that really damages Republicans, especially with independent voters. They'll probably just vote out, even if it's a new Republican replacing Santos. He wouldn't have a chance at winning. The 18th, I expect that to shift at likely blue, honestly, because, again, Biden won this district by eight, so it'll definitely help out Democrats here. Brandon Williams, he's way too partisan. He doesn't really stand a chance here. He's way too supportive of Trump and a Biden plus 7.5 district. He's going to get unseated. Michael Lawler, he's in for the fight of his life. I mean, I don't really think he could pull it off, considering how Biden-friendly the district is. But again, he's one of the more moderate Republicans. So I'm going to be generous to him and make it only tilt blue, because this is one of the seats that I think he could have a fighting chance in. And Molinaro, again, he's going to be in fight for his life, similar to Lawler, but can he pull it off? Again, it's only a Biden one district by 4.6. And if they redistrict the seat, he's done. But uh, for now, this is assuming they don't. So, tilts Republican for now. Okay, let's get a zoom out. Let's see. Let's fix that Maryland C. I don't think that's going to be competitive at all. Uh, let's head to New Jersey. With Tom Keen. Or actually, let's just scroll through this way. But we'll start off with California first, because we'll do the bigger states. Knock them out as well. Uh, the third district, I think that'll actually go to lean Republican. Ken Calvert, I still think that'll stay relatively competitive, but I still think uh, Ken Calvert will probably win. Michelle Steele, I still think she's going to get unseated narrowly, even though some people might say this district is trending at all. Biden still won it by 6.2%, and honestly, Michelle Steele isn't acting super bipartisan in Congress. Katie Porter's old house seat with Biden performing well presidentially he'll probably 
carry this house incumbent or new Democrat to a likely victory here. They're not an incumbent. Uh, let's see these three swing seats here. Let's fix Josh Harder seat. I think it's going to be safe blue. The 13th, again, it's a super Democratic seat, so I just think the with the presidential turnout, Republicans really don't have a shot here. The 22nd seat with Valadejo, again, he's probably done. It's like a 13-point Biden seat. Garcia is the only one who stands a chance here, and even him with that presidential turnout, I just don't think he could survive. I think this time he's actually going to lose. But we'll see. But I think he'll actually lose. In Washington, I'm going to bump that up to likely blue. And with Marie Perez, I really think she's acting quite bipartisan. I think she has a good shot at winning there. With Lori Chavez de Rimmer, I think she's bound to lose just because of presidential turnout. But it'll be one of the more competitive house seats. In Nevada, I think Susie Lee will probably win by a lean margin. I think, again, with higher Democratic turnout, the Democrats are favored to win here. With Alaska and Maine, I'm keeping them as lean blue each. I think Jared Golden and uh, Marie Patola are doing a great rural outreach in both these states, and they'll probably both easily win. In Arizona, with Arizona's first district, I think Switecart's probably going to lose at this point. Again, he almost lost last time, and with higher Democratic turnout, that's the theme of this video. He's probably going to lose the sixth. Cisco Mania has a chance at surviving, but I just think Biden probably wins Arizona overall if it's Biden versus Trump again. And that'll just carry the House Democrats down here in Arizona. In New Mexico, I think the first is just safe blue. Second, probably lean blue. Let's see if we could scroll through some of these. They'll probably be faster. Lauren Boebert. I actually think she survives again. Just because there'll be higher turnout for Republicans in Colorado, she'll probably make it. Cara Vejo, higher Democratic turnout. She'll probably win by a lean margin. Johanna Hayes, likely blue district, could even go safe blow, but again, it's only a 10-point Biden district. Zach Nunn, I think he holds on here by a narrow tilt margin. Sorensen, lean blue, I would put it. I do think that he maybe could lag a bit and turn out behind Biden. Marvin, I think he wins by a likely blue margin. I think presidential turnout will help him a lot here. Slotkin's old seat, assuming Biden does well in Michigan. The House Dem here replacing her will probably win by a tilt margin. John James, Tiltar. I think he'll hold on. But if Biden wins by a likely margin, he's done. Angie Craig, I'm going to bump that up to a likely seat. Ryan Zink, I think because of Tester being on the ticket, he'll really help House Democrats here. They'll probably run a moderate candidate for this district, and that moderate candidate will probably win just because of Tester boosting Democratic turnout in Montana. Don Bacon, again, he barely won last time, and with Biden, it's a Biden one district by six points. So uh, in a presidential year, I think he's done for now. I don't think he's going to win. Tom Keene, however, I think he could have enough crossover support. And uh, the Keene family in New Jersey, they do have a bit of a history there. So I do think that last name really helps him out a bit, and he narrowly wins. Let's keep scrolling through. Okay, Susan Wilde, Matt Cartwright. These are going to be the most competitive races in Pennsylvania. I'm rating them both as tilt blue for now. Pennsylvania 17th, like lean blue as well. Uh, Virginia 2nd. I think Republicans are slightly favored to win here. It's only a Biden 1 district of 2 points. They have a good chance at holding it. And let's see if there's any ratings I would change. Oh, I forgot. Marionette Miller-Meeks. I think she wins by a lean 4% margin. So... Democrats at 224 seats to the Republicans, 211. And uh, let's hop to Pennsylvania because I want to change a couple of ratings there because I think Democrats are actually targeting here. Pennsylvania 10th, it's only a Trump one district by point, or four points. So I do think it'll be a lean Republican. And Fitzpatrick, honestly, Democrats are targeting them this time. And I think it's possible it goes down to only a four point win for him. So. That's all my uh, house ratings for now, 224 to 211. Let me know what we think of this house map, and let me know if you'd change any races. But for now, I think the Democrats are favored to retake the House and lose the Senate. And uh, that's my house prediction, and I'll see you guys in the next video.